everyone, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. Let's be honest, reading classics can be kind of scary. And I don't mean scary as in, you know, finding a book in like leather made from human flesh in Latin, where you, if you read it out loud, you might summon something really bad. <coughs> but classics can be intimidating for many reasons. Mostly because they're very long and also because of the language that a lot of these books have within them because it's very different from the language The English language that you and I speak today So a lot of people steer away from classics. They find them boring. They find them annoying and they find them particularly long But that doesn't always have to be the case and I'm here to recommend three classics for you that might actually make you enjoy classics or maybe might make you think that I'm crazy. Let's get right into the video. First of all, let's talk a little bit about what qualifies as a classic because a lot of people seem to think that anything that was written, I don't know, in the 1800s counts as a classic. And while a lot of things from the 1800s do count as classics, that is not the only like the only century that classics can come from. In fact, usually the definition given is anything written before World War II that has stood the test of time can be classified as a classic. But that doesn't mean that anything written post World War II isn't a classic. That is what we call modern classics. Now, when does this modern classic thing stop? That is kind of up for debate. In my case, I say anything before 1980 is considered a modern classic. And then, of course, we have the typical classic, which is anything written before World War II. I hope that helps shed some light into what constitutes classics. But let's be honest, you're here for some classics recommendations that, number one, aren't too long, number two, aren't too difficult to follow, and number three, might make you enjoy classics way more. So let's get right into it. Now here I have three classics. Well, actually, I have two classics and one modern classic that I think will be great for you to start off with. So let's get going. I'm gonna start off with a modern day classic and something that Netflix made really famous. The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Now, Shirley Jackson wrote this in 1959. That's why this is considered a modern day classic. And this is the story of a woman called Eleanor who suffers from insomnia and she gets called or she finds this news ad for people that suffer from insomnia to go to this house to study the effects of insomnia. Editing Monica here. I don't know where I got the insomnia thing from. No, I'm totally lying just because I want to cover my butt. But actually, the insomnia thing is from a movie that it was inspired by the book, which, by the way, is the closest thing to the book that I have seen. But anyway, it's not about people having insomnia. The whole premise is that the doctor that is running this program wants to prove the existence of the paranormal. And that's why these people go to this house. They answer an ad to prove whether things are like whether there are paranormal phenomena or not. The whole insomnia thing is is from the shitty, I think, 1994 movie with Catherine Zeta Jones, by the way. And what's his face? One of the brothers, Owen Wilson, Owen Wilson. And like, well, well the guy from, I, I'm so good at remembering names, the guy from Taken. What's his name? I forgot. But yeah, <laughs> if you want to see the most faithful adaptation of this book, then watch that. Now I'll let um, Confused Monica continue on with the video. Now, of course, this house has a really haunting history. And a lot of crazy, crazy shit happens. In this book. This book, I would say, is for people who are open-minded to this kind of not wordy, not flowery writing, but to things that might not always make sense, all right? This one is one of those things that will maybe confuse you. 
But I think if you saw the Netflix show, Hill House, you might already kind of be, be there. Now, I'll let you know that the show Hill House and The Haunting of Hill House have absolutely nothing to do with each other, except for the name of the house and the name of some characters. So if you watch the show and you're expecting to find that here, you won't. But you, what you will find here is the incredible story of degradation of the female psyche and also it's really short. I think it's less than 300 pages. Yes, it's 245 pages. So this is a great way for you to start with a modern classic and also you have the added bonus of the TV show that might inspire you to pick it up. Sticking to adaptations that might make you want to pick up a classic, Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. We have all heard the movie, we have seen the millions of times that this has been turned into TV series and into movies and the 1994 version is still my favorite. But that being said, what is this book about? This book is about four sisters living in post-colonial, post-colonial? I think it is called post-colonial United States and their struggles, their love lives, their desire to be seen as more than just women and also the love of their mother for them and how this woman manages to raise four beautiful, wonderful individual people and it's amazing. Now if you have seen the movie, I think the 1994 version and the new version, the 2019 version I think it is, if you marry them together, you get this book. But another thing I really enjoy about this book is that it's really easy to read. It's heartwarming, it's not wordy, it's not verbose, it's not crazy. You can just go into it and just enjoy it. This is one of those books that really can get people to think classics are accessible and make you feel good because a lot of the times classics kind of are tragic and you know that's why I'm not including War and Peace in this because um, I don't think unless you really really enjoy tragedy I don't think that is the best way to come into this although you know the Shirley Jackson book is kind of tragic but not as tragic as um, Crime and Punishment not War and Peace so this is a good one. Now this one is a little bit longer than the other one. I believe this is, yes, this is 560 pages, but I assure you they go by so fast and it's a little bit preachy, but then let's remember this came out in 1847. So it's a little bit on the preachy godly side. Just if you don't mind, you can just ignore that. You actually can ignore it and still enjoy this book very, very much. And the final classic that I want to recommend to you because it is amazing and I can't believe I had been my entire life without reading it is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Now in this case, the writing is a lot more flowery than in the other cases. But what I like about this is that the story is simple to follow. The book is really short. I think it's 200... Why don't I prepare for these things? It's 230 pages long, so really you can read this pretty fast. And it's not preachy. And the things they talk about in the book are so relevant still today. And that's, well, that's what makes classics classics, that in the end, what they talk about still resonates with us today. But this book is so beautiful. It's so full of, I want, like this idea that you might want to be a good person, but you have done so much wrong in your life and where does that line lie between being good, being bad, and having the ability to have redemption. This is the story of Dorian Gray who is friends with an artist named Howard. Is it Basil Howard? Howard. And Basil absolutely loves Dorian. But he doesn't just love Dorian for his physical beauty. There is something innately good about Dorian that he tries to capture in his picture. And by the time that it's done, 
the picture is seen as Howard's most incredible creation. And then what happens is that Dorian meets Howard's um, less on the proper side friend, Lord Henry. And Lord Henry strikes up this friendship with Dorian Gray that kind of leads Dorian into this world of debauchery, this world of using people, this world of, you know, the wrong way of doing things. And even though Dorian tries to be good in the end, he kind of gets swept up into it all. And as you all know, it's not just about the painting aging instead of Dorian, but it's also the painting showing things that Dorian does that Dorian's face doesn't do. It's kind of like this idea of looking at yourself in the mirror after you've done something horrible and seeing yourself changed, but what if you didn't? Which sounds a lot like The Invisible Man, but anyway. This book is amazing. This book is beautifully written. If you never read Oscar Wilde, I recommend please do it. Please try it. And again, it's really short, so you'll get through it pretty fast. There are so many more classics that I wish to recommend, but those are the three that I think came to mind as I was thinking about this video. And I didn't want to do like a whole like 50 classics recommendation, but I know that these are the books that helped me get both into classics and into modern classics. Now, when I talk about classics, I put modern classics and classics in the same vein. So there you have it. You can send the academic police after me, if you will. But as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do read any of these classics, please let me know down below or let me know the classic that got you into reading classics for the first time. I would love to know. And that's it from me today. Please don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content because I would love to have you here. And I will see you next time. Bye guys. Not gonna lie, I love today's outfit and today's makeup. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm filming two videos and not even caring to change. <laughs>